I watched a bit of Viva Fry's interviews in Ottawa today, including the counter protesters. The prevailing theme was the jab is a civic duty versus bodily autonomy. This feels like a fundamental debate of collectivism versus individualism, opposites but both essential. How do we bridge the divide? This is a huge and difficult question. And yep. here, here's the wrinkle, right? And Heather and I have been, we have tried to be very careful never to embrace this pure bodily autonomy position because it yep. isn't right. There are cases in which you might have to mandate something. Now, although I will admit that seeing clips of Trudeau go in my body, my choice back when he was whatever the fuck he was before, um, is jarring and enjoyable well, because he's such a hypocrite. The, the, the This two-year process has pushed me to recognize some things that I didn't know before. Mm. One is I don't think I've seen a government structure that is free enough of corruption that I would trust it to override bodily autonomy. Doesn't mean I can't come up with a thought experiment in which it's actually necessary for our collective well-being and ability to go into the future that something be mandated. This but is, I don't see the government that can be trusted with it. This is huge. Yep, um, a lot, and a lot of people. I'm, I'm in the same camp as you know, but I think that we're we're by far not alone. Right. But so okay, let's agree to two things. One, let's leave open the possibility that you could have a structure that trustworthy, but that we haven't seen it and we can't even prove that it's possible. It yeah. may be that it's not. If that's true, then the bodily uh, autonomy thing has to has to govern. Yeah, and as um, I've forgotten his name, the um, the the only living member of the of the framing of the Canadian Charter, uh, who argues that what's in there says individual first, and then the group to which the groups to which you are members to which you belong. Right now, I. I do think this is kind of an inversion, right? As we were talking about in the in the main podcast, at some level, every decent society has to prioritize future generations, right? And you know, most especially ones that are already present on the planet, because mm. it's very hard to do well by people who will live seven generations from now. But it's pretty, it's much easier to deal with children who actually exist. I don't, but I don't think children are even referenced in that. Like you're not, you know, yeah, but they are because, you know, your genome gets divided in two. And the point is you get atomized. You don't necessarily. Yeah, but there's, there's no, it's, we're not talking about atomized genomes here. <laughs> no, we're, we're talking about a heuristic. He's saying individual first, but why are you doing that? No, it's because so, so you didn't listen to the whole the, his whole speech, but you know that that particular quote is just about individuals and the groups to which you belong. You know, okay, so you know, you as a child may have certain things, but like generally, you're talking to adults, and adults aren't members of the groups that are children. And so, there's nothing in that that says you don't actually need to prioritize some groups of which you may well not be members. I mean, I just don't think it's even responsive to that. I think, you know, the well, needing, needing to protect children is not um, addressed by that particular quote. I'm not so sure about that. Okay. I'm not so sure about that because I think civilization, to the extent that we are uh, not doing what is necessary for our children to have an environment in which they will acquire the things they need to in order to be healthy adults, that's a collective problem. Right. It's something yeah. we collectively have a responsibility for dealing with. And I'm not sure that individual well-being trumps it inherently. But um, <clears throat> but what I, what I want to say is two things. One, individual autonomy wins out here because not only do we not know whether or not a government that is capable of shouldering the responsibility is conceivable or could be stabilized so that it could continue to exist. Yep. But we certainly know that none of the governments on earth can shoulder that responsibility because they're all so fucking corrupt. But, yeah, but hold um, on. But the second, we thing, know. <laughs> the second thing is the logic of these mandates is so bad that the point is it's not even that the group's well-being has been prioritized over yours. It's Pfizer's well-being has been prioritized over the group and you and your children and every other thing. Yep. And the point is that is just completely illegitimate at every level. Yes, you have the yep. right to say no to a policy that is Pfizer motivated. Yeah. No, and it's, I mean, it's, it's actually 
remarkable how there seems to be like no way in which you can argue in favor of the the government's right here to to mandate these things there yeah and especially if we just talk about you know for for children yeah they're not safe they're not effective they're not necessary that's it yeah like it's you know it's it's for it's for a disease that barely affects children it's a treatment that is dangerous for children it's not effective for anyone particularly in uh keeping away disease except perhaps for the very old and those with comorbidities so that's the thing they're going to mandate well again you know honestly if, if, if you can mandate that what can't you Right. But we've got to draw the circle a little tighter, okay. right? I agree that children are the place to focus because it is so obvious in their case. But the vaccines that they lied to us and told us prevented the transmission of disease, and now mm -hmm. they swear they never said that. But of course, it's been caught so many different places that it's obviously just a lie. Mm -hmm. But those vaccines, which do not prevent the transmission of disease, we are now told you should take to protect you from serious illness, mm -hmm. right? These healthy kids don't get serious illness from COVID. Right. What's more, and if, can, even what's if it, more, sorry. you cannot protect the people who do get serious illness by vaccinating children. Right. So right. the point is, look. It doesn't stop transmission. Right. So why would you accept, even if we didn't know There's about, no collectivist argument to be made for a treatment that doesn't stop transmission. There is no logical argument to be made in this case. It is strictly a matter of you have been told something vague about what the good people are doing, and you've been told that the more of it you do, the gooder you are, and therefore we are going to vaccinate your children, and that is insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get more good points for the more children you vaccinate, the more times. Or maybe it's the exact inverse. <laughs>